All right, and we'll get started. So I'm Valerie Early of Nutrition Connection Balance. Tonight we'll be talking about inflammation, pain, prevention, and therapies. And we certainly want to um, talk about the things that I'm concerned about, as well as as we get older, inflammation is what turns on all disease. I am a registered and licensed dietitian. I specialize in nutrition and hormones and prevention. Um, I was a director of a compounding pharmacy for many years here in Chicago, and then I opened my practice 14 years ago. Um, I did a medical internship at the Cleveland Clinic, and I also have advanced medical uh, health and fitness certification. I'm a Reiki master. Um, I've completed a few natural bodybuilding shows, done three marathons, many, many five and 10Ks, uh, mom of five, and certainly I like to think of myself as an entrepreneur. Biggest thing is I've always been an educator and someone that likes to empower people with information. Always what I hear when people are ill or they're well and then all of a sudden they get ill is I've tried everything or I was healthy the day before. Most of the tests that most people do, unfortunately today, are all detection. They're not prevention. And that's where I've always believed in something different. Um, the only thing I'm going to say about my background, just so you know, besides that, is a registered dietitian means they have to have at least five to, years, uh, five to six years of college. Uh, my degree is food and nutrition science from Florida State. And then I did a medical internship at the Cleveland Clinic. And then you have to have a minimum of 75 continuing education hours. And registered dietitian rules over any other kind of nutrition degree, license, all of that. So just so you know, make sure you ask when you ask someone medical or scientific advice, what their background is. And I think that's very important. So this is my son, Dylan, and this is one of my favorite pictures of him because now he's 6'4 and a tennis player. He'll be 21 next month. But this was a situation where he was running down the hallway, fell on a shoe, and then didn't get up for a while. And they thought he broke his hip growth plate, which means you can't grow. It can cause all sorts of autoimmune and other issues. And I just had him put his finger in his ears and tell him, I told him, don't listen to the emergency room doctors. I put on the cast and then we went home. And so what we did is we actually did different types of therapies all in this clinic tonight so that he could heal fast. They said it would be at least a year before he'd run and play tennis again. And that was not true. Everything was completely better within three months or less. So again, be careful what you believe when you go the medical route. One of his goals is to be taller than my, uh, my new husband, John, last year, and now he is uh, taller than John. So obviously, the growth plate healed perfectly fine, uh, and he's uh, one of the tallest in both sides of our family. So nutrition is one-third of height, just so you know. So what we're going to be talking about tonight is the secret killer, which is inflammation. This was in Time Magazine many, many, many years ago. And I laugh because still most people don't even know that inflammation turns on all disease. And I mean all of it. But we're talking about pain, scarring, ligament tears, muscle tears. We're also talking about heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. Inflammation turns on disease, whether it's systemic internally or localized. So what is actually the inflammation process? It's actually about the immune system triggering inflammation. So it signals that you're hurt or you're ill, and that can include bleeding, clotting, you know, an injury, a stroke. Then it affects the neurons, and those neurons cause pain or unusual feelings like aches and pains, and prostaglandins are triggered. And the reason I put that word in there is because when we talk about omegas over and over in inflammation, that's the bottom line that stirs Oh, that you certainly want if you have an injury so that you can heal or if you have a surgery so your, your whole um, incision can heal. But you don't want prostaglandins all the time because they cause pain and inflammation and disease. So it's very important to know that. And then histamine in particular is something else that contributes to asthma and allergies, which is absolutely rampant yeah, in the United States. Goddamn thing that can and happen. then what happens is you can have an overactive immune system from inflammation being triggered, and that's where autoimmune diseases come in. Yeah. And certainly rheumatoid arthritis is one example we'll go over more that cause a lot of pain. The other part of that is the part that most people still don't know, even when I work with a lot of pretty integrative physicians, is that inflammation or inflammation and aging go together. So obesity and body fat increases low-grade inflammation. It is one of the keys between insulin resistance, prediabetes, insulin growth factor, all the things that are associated with disease, with aging. I have professional athletes that have prediabetes that are extremely fit. And that's because as we get older, our pancreas produces less enzymes, less insulin, and so on. So it's very important to know how, how essential it is that we know your body fat, not just your weight, because those <coughs> then elevate the risk of tumors and diabetes and cancer. 
Okay, so inflammation again, even with obesity, is part of that whole complex. And then we can look at the brain. We know that today there are multiple different things that show inflammation is what turns on Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia, the same thing. And remember, again, as I put together how the immune system and different things affect inflammation, then it turns on inflammatory cytokines as well as those other markers that we're going to talk about that contribute to disease. So again, inflammation starts all of it. And then most people know about different types of arthritis. You can see on the left with the blue, there's a healthy finger joint. Then you've got osteoarthritis. Then you have rheumatoid arthritis. And obviously, they're both very painful. So we certainly want to decrease our risk and decrease the itises as we get older that are part of aging, but hopefully we don't have to make it debilitating. There's also degenerative diseases like degenerative disc problems, macular degeneration, all the autoimmune conditions, whether it's MS, lupus, Crohn's, colitis, diverticulitis. The word itis means inflammation, and cancer is an inflammatory condition. So you kind of get the point here of how important this is. It's not just to say you have joint pain or knee pain or you have uh, rheumatoid arthritis. We want to understand that all these things go together. The reason I put this one in there is because when we start talking about pain and then we talk about things you want to use instead of most medications, except for very short term, is because illness and pain go together. Since anxiety is half of all Americans and depression is also part of half of that, those can come from pain, injury, or inflammation whether it's of the brain or the other parts of the system. And the gut is 60 to 90% of the immune system, and that's where almost all the neurotransmitters are made. So when pain happens or those get cut off, that's when people have to use prescriptions. So injury, exercise, athletes, and of course, poor health and nutrition is also part of what increases that pain risk, including anxiety and depression. What we want to know, and, and the reason I start the lecture off this way, is why I spend my time volunteering to do these kind of lectures. Because we're 5% of the population in the United States, yet we're 80% of the use of pain medications. You can die with the first use, and 8 to 12% of people on opiates will become addicted. Oh, it has nothing to do with, we're not talking about a homeless person, we're not talking about mentally ill, we're talking about a regular middle class person. We don't know why so many people get addicted, but how it affects the brain and the nervous system. So pain and anti-inflammatory drugs are in that class also, and that things are things like Oxycontin, Percocet, Norco, Vicodin, Celebrex, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like aspirin, Tylenol, ibuprofen. 30 million people worldwide use these kind of medications. And when you see some of the side effects and the risks, you're gonna wanna handle pain differently. The top five opiates that they showed this particular year was fentanyl, uh, oxycotton, demerol, hydrocodone, and morphine. And you know, even last night, three people brought up prescriptions that their doctor gave them this week. And it was in, on these lists. And from July 2017 to September 2017, it always takes a few years to get statistics, there was a 30 to 54% increase in US overdoses. These are again, normal people that get ill, have pain, or have fibromyalgia, anxiety, or depression. So we wanna make sure we're learning to do things differently. The reason I bring up Celebrex is when I was first in the pharmacy, this became really well known, and you, no one I knew was on Celebrex for years. It's coming back the last few years. Most pharmaceutical companies wait about 10 years till it kind of passes, and then they just bring it back again. But in 2017 and 2005, and more, many more, even last year, another uh, study was published that they show that uh, the study actually was stopped because the risk of cardiovascular disease is double. Celebrex is used a lot for just in general pain or aches and pains. Ibuprofen, Motrin, those kind of things. Women use it for PMS. Men use it because they can't sleep or they have a hard day at work. Athletes use it because they're told if they're sore, take aspirin or ibuprofen or Advil. You increase your risk of cardiovascular disease, GI issues, which then affect more anxiety and depression. Okay, so very important again, kidney and skin issues and all types of breathing issues. You also double your risk of heart failure. So the US Food and Drug Administration, a very conservative agency, even says you should use them as short as possible and you should not use them more than 10 days. I have people that have been on these every week for migraines, car, you know, carpal tunnel at work and they're taking 16 Motrin a day 
and they wonder why they have stomach problems and depression and anxiety and asthma and allergies. So we want to be very, very careful that we are not doing that very long. The main reason is all of those classes of medications that are used for pain, inflammation, and so on are respiratory depressants. It makes it hard to breathe. A lot of the overdoses that you hear in Hollywood are from overdoses and these kind of medications and they stop breathing. It causes liver damage and ALT and AST is something you can check in a blood test. Stomach bleeding and then ulcers. And when the stomach is affected by these types of medications, they suppress, again, the neurotransmitters that are serotonin, dopamine, epinephrine, all these feel good and, and hormones, as well as histamine gets reacted. So why is it so important? I just bring in women in this one in particular, because people just still don't believe this, that women in their 60s are the most common because they, take a, they have a mistake with pain medication. They take them too close together, too much or too long, or they're taken in combination with anti-anxiety and antidepressants. $42 billion a year are spent on overdoses in healthy, um, educated people. And this is the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry. So again, that's all I'm going to say about that. You know, and then we have to have some, hopefully, some sense of humor that, as the pharmacy says, each capsule contains your medication plus a treatment for all the side effects. So we want you to be smarter than that. We want to make sure we're teaching you that there are so many other options, you just don't know about them. And usually, unfortunately, when someone has pain, it's an accident or something out of the blue, and then they just think they go to their doctor, they take a medication, and they get better. That is not true. Here's an example. Do pain medications really even work? When they had 30, they had a particular study with 38% of people with pretty severe lower back pain. They gave pain medication at the first medical visit. After one year, the dose is increased and it's doubled, at least doubled, if not a second or third medication. And after one year, there's only a 6% really, 6%. So make sure you remember this. I'm going to tie this back in as we talk. First of all, we want to start talking about what's non-addictive, safe, safe anti-inflammatories and pain reducers. Number one is good nutrition. I became a registered dietitian first because you're going to eat your whole life. Food has properties that can heal you or hurt you. They also show that, of course, healthy stress levels. There's a great book I'm reading right now suggested by a physician that stress is good for us. And that is true. That's what makes us goal-oriented. That's what makes us appreciate other things. But then there's a level of stress that then turns on disease as well as pain and accidents and all sorts of things. We want to reduce nitric oxide because it slows inflammation, reduces tissue swelling. And what they find is when you have the good nutrition with the right types of probiotic, you reduce the nitrate that's bad and you support the immune system. Remember as the first slide, the immune system is partly what turns on inflammation. So it is a system. Your head is not separate from your gut. Your gut is not separate from your foot. Yet if you have a foot pain, you go to the foot doctor. Well, why did it start? Was it systemic? Does something trigger it? You have to ask all these questions to get better. So two of the things, again, that start to come in, and this, this particular screen was from a, a four-hour uh, study course I did just on a very, very conservative medical updates on clinical systemic inflammation. And the bottom line was better nutrition, healthy stress levels, measuring the gut health, getting ideal omega levels, which we'll talk about in depth. And again, hear the word again, prostaglandins. Prostaglandins cause inflammation and pain. We want to keep those at bay, and I'm going to teach you how to do that as we go on. So let's move into the nutrition part that can be really fun. Nutrigenomics or epigenetics, both. There's a fancier name now with epigenetics because of genes, but it's the same thing. And it shows that there's many different foods that interact with specific genes that we all have that are different, that modify a risk of a, con a common chronic disease. Nutrigenomics also seeks to identify those biochemical molecules called phytonutrients that are then in the diet that help health by altering the expression of genes. So even if you have a genetic factor for something in digestive, or let's say you have something, a certain type of cancer, they show that 97% can be turned off, kept off, with the right nutrition, keeping systemic inflammation down and individualizing. Why in the world would my husband or Dottie or, or my son need exactly all the same things? It's ridiculous. So even when someone has pain, why do we just give everyone the same pain medication? Three people last night in a lecture that was live had the same pain medication that was on the top five most dangerous list. So what about for certain foods that promote 
and help with keeping inflammation at bay. Here's one of the top lists, turmeric and curcumin, ginger, certain types of mushrooms, green tea, papaya, blueberries, broccoli, spinach, and pineapple. Pay close attention to these. I tie things in as I continue to talk in the lecture. But those are very helpful foods that you combine with your breakfast. You can put in your smoothie. You can have as a side dish. My top two breakfasts that are anti-inflammatory that I put every single person on, and that's what our family's done for 20 years, is we use a complete shake with fruit and or water and some of these ingredients. We open Juice Plus capsules in there, or, and or, depending on our boys that are bigger, they'll have that and they'll have a few eggs or egg whites and a cup of berries. So very, very anti-inflammatory foods. And when you start your day that way, you get all sorts of other positive benefits. So what are some of the enemies of pain and inflammation? Refined sugars, trans fatty acids. Trans fatty acids are a no-no. You wanna look on the ingredient label, make sure you don't have any foods on a regular basis with hydrogenated or palm oil. That includes fancy granola bars, that even includes nuts and seeds. You have to read the label if it's in a package. And then you can also check the label ingredients and make sure it says zero trans fatty acids. There is a glitch in the law though, so you have to make sure that you read the ingredients also, or they could have 0.5 milligrams of a 0.5 grams of trans fatty acids in a food. So imagine if you have a little child that's eating a cookie in their lunch every day that has 0.5 trans fatty acids. That's two and a half grams. That increases their risk by age three of having 80% cardiovascular changes already in their arteries. We wanna make sure that you have the right ratios of omega-3s to the sixes and nines, and we'll talk about that more in the test. Processed potatoes are horrible for you. A baked potato with salsa, with vegetables, is fantastic for you. Processed potatoes, potato chips and french fries, they are heated at a very high heat in oil that changes one of the ingredients called acrylamide. Acrylamide is a known cancer-causing inflammatory agent. And yet, what do, what do Americans eat all the time? So again, it's really important to know that. Milk and dairy, I won't go into in depth. All I'm gonna say about that is if you don't believe that milk and dairy is not good for you, I would highly recommend if you're visual to get the movie Forks Over Knives, my absolute favorite nutritional documentary on the market ever done. And the second would be the China study if you prefer reading. Very, very non-confrontational, but very, very factual. And when I have any physician or health professional or surgeon that sees me, that is one of the movies they have to watch before they come back to my office because I'm not gonna argue that nutrition matters. Pesticides on fruits cause all sorts of problems and pain, and some people have very severe reactions to them, and you don't even know that. And then sulfur dioxide in certain fruits, gluten, and then toxic and toxic people. I say you become the top five people you hang around. So if you're in a toxic job or a toxic friendship, you need to find healthier, happier people. Their vibration that's based on quantum energy affects yours. So the more you're around them, the longer you're around them, the more it affects you. This is what we want to have a lot more of. This is some of the things that Pure Juice last night has a wonderful things to make. These are part of that fuels our tissues and keeps inflammation down, are those beautiful plant foods that come in a rainbow of colors. Juice Plus and Vineyard Blend are one of the products that I highly recommend every single patient takes in every single age. When there's pregnant, my pregnant women take it. When the babies, when they're breastfeeding, they're getting it through the mom. And then as soon as they start eating cereal between three and six months, we open the capsules and put it in their, their food and we put it on their tongue. And it comes in a capsule or chewable form. It's 30 different plant foods. And the reason is it has multiple studies. There's 38 peer-reviewed studies that show when you swallow it or open the capsules and put them in your smoothie if you don't like swallowing pills, that it changes multiple different systems. Some of those systems include things that we're talking about here. Inflammatory response, protecting DNA and oxidative stress. I'm picking those three in particular, and of course immune health, because those are the things that trigger systemic inflammation. 12 of the studies when they use Juice Plus showed a reduction of oxidative stress. Oxidative stress comes from eating poor food, from not getting enough sleep, from over-exercising. So you have to have a very large amount of antioxidants to suppress that. 
three of the publications are incredible. They show that they reduce particular markers of inflammation, interleukins, cytokines, as well as C-reactive protein that I'll talk about in, in very big depth here. This particular, one of these journals I brought to a biochemist in 2002 that was working at Berkeley that I knew, and he said, I don't know what you just had me read, but how do I get on it? And of course, when you have it in a medical journal, they don't tell you what the product is. They use the product, and that's where we want to be very cognizant of how important it is. This particular study is a really good one because it showed markers of DNA damage were changed by taking the capsules, and inflammatory markers also changed. So we know that those are related to cancer. We know they're related to systemic inflammation. So you want to be able to have them in your body. I say it's the best body insurance there is every single day. Because as a dietitian, I teach people that try to have at least five a day, but the average is supposed to be 10 to 17 raw fruits and vegetables every single day of the year. And I say to my audience last night, if I picked a lady and she had four people living in her house, even if you aim for the 10, four people in her house, that's 40 servings of fruits and vegetables every day. 40 times seven is 280. You're really telling me when people tell me they eat that many, that they have 280 servings of fruits and vegetables, a half to one cup of leafy in their refrigerator, they're not telling the truth. So my job is to provide people with things that we know work, that you can do, that helps change the systemic inflammation, whether you feel it or not. Inflammation, as we talked about with body fat, particularly are one of the things that increase inflammation and then can contribute to heart disease, infection, all sorts of things. Three particular tests, the top two, are the cardiac CRP, C-reactive protein, or highly sensitive C-reactive protein. You can ask your physician to do that. You can go to a walk-in lab and have that done. That shows us this level of systemic inflammation. You want it to be 0.8 or less. Essential fatty acid test we'll talk about is an omega index. It's an eight-page report that tells you every essential fatty acid in your body, and it tells me what omega to put you on. Should you eat more avocados? Should your husband eat less coconut? all different things, what oil should you use based on your body chemistry. And then if there's a lot of stress in your life or you've had cancer or high risk of cancer, you absolutely wanna check your cortisol by saliva, okay? So let me give you a few examples of why. There's a direct relationship between C-reactive protein and every point above 0 0.08 that goes up with stroke and blood clots. Strokes are very common as we get older but it's also very common in our women, especially when they're on birth control. They have a very high risk, even if they don't smoke, of blood clots and stroke and autoimmune disease because of taking synthetic estrogen. And again, women have very few choices when they are at childbearing age when they don't want to get pregnant if they're in a relationship. So again, we want to be real careful and know that C-reactive protein is correlated to stroke blood clots directly. So essential fatty acids are what are important. I'm going to go over three. Again, when I do an eight-page report, it's very detailed. I do a clinic for that. But EPA and DHA are the keys. EPA and DHA are the omega-3s that get to the final level of affecting prostaglandins. Remember, prostaglandins and inflammation are what turn on pain and systemic inflammation and every single disease you know about. Alpha-linoleic acid is what you don't want too much of. And it's really hard because people believe they should have lots of flaxseed. They believe they should have lots of nuts and seeds. Those foods have wonderful nutrition components, wonderful essential fatty acids, but you should not have them instead of a fish oil. They are small amounts with fish oil. And the reason is when your body breaks down alpha linoleic acid, it cannot get to the EPA DHA level or the prostaglandin level. So you'd have to have 10 cups of flax meal to equal one good fish oil. The other thing I bring up is that Apparently someone didn't listen to my lecture when they were listening well last yesterday because they come up afterwards and they ask, should I just go get uh, fish oil at the store? Absolutely not. That is why I put this, this in here. Lavaza is a prescription fish oil that is the wrong form that directly negatively affects inflammation and increases LDL cholesterol. Almost every form in the grocery store or CVS or Whole Foods is an ethyl ester, which has also a problem. And krill oil, you'd have to take a whole bottle to equal two of the right EPA and DHA. 
There's also all sorts of rules around fish oil. It takes me months to bring something in. I have 19 different essential fatty acids in my office. It depends on what your tests are of which one I'd recommend. Here's an example of my son, Dylan. I'm sorry, this one's blurry. I don't know why it came up blurry on this, this lecture today and yesterday, but this is an omega index. If you remember nothing else from this eight-page report, you want to know your index. My son had always taken fish oil. He's a big tennis player. He was in college, and he was having all sorts of joint problems all of a sudden, but not just in his arms, his elbows, his knees, his toes. And I said, are you taking your fish oil? And he goes, oh my gosh, mom, I forgot. They lost it in college. It's somewhere in the dorm, and I haven't been on it for four months. We did his index. It was down to 6.2%. This is a healthy 19-year-old. He went from 11% to 6.2 in less than three months with all sorts of joint pain because he's a heavy exerciser and of course he's growing and he's tall, he's 6'4". This is my index. This is what you want to be, 10 to 12%. You do not want to be below 8% ever. The minimal for any age, no matter what, even if I know nothing about you, is 8%. If you're 10 to 12%, you have an 80% less risk of a first cardiovascular event of any kind, and all systemic inflammation is reduced at least 5 to 90%. So again, we want things that work. Then this particular uh, report is really helpful on the second page. I only bring first page and second page in because this is a pain and inflammation lecture. And they look at the six to three ratio. You can see my son here went way too high again. He had been way down here. And that's because again, his body got inflamed and then acid had been turned on. That's why he was experiencing pain. When you have pain too long and the acid level called the rocodonic acid up too high, it causes pain. It turns on autoimmune disease, fibromyalgia, all these conditions that are contributory, including cancers. Rheumatoid arthritis, Lyme's disease, all of them are affected by this acid. So this report tells me so much so that I can tell you which fish oil, which foods would be better for you versus others that would not be good to you. So this is called an omega quant index test. So like, for example, with my son, we had to change his fish oils around. We end up taking this high level of EPA and then the juice plus omegas that have a very concentrated form of DHA. And so we end up having to change his stuff around for this combination. Within three months, actually two and a half months, his levels were normal. And then we've been able to get him back more to a normal dose. But he had to take five pro EPA extra and two juice plus omegas for a while. That's a pretty high dose at a 19-year-old. But again, it completely changes his pain around. So when people ask me, well, can't they just eat the foods? The answer is no. And I like to tell you as a dietitian, if I can have you change your diet to support the process, I will. Or if there's a way to have food instead of a dietary supplement, then I will. But here are some examples. Even when you talk about a large amount, a whole can of pink wild salmon, you're getting 456 milligrams of EPA. The average person I measure needs between 1,000 and 4,000, that's the average person, of EPA and DHA. Albacore tuna, I eat it five days a week. It's my favorite lunch, 198. Do you know how many cans of tuna I'd have to have? 10 cans of tuna a day to get my minimal amount, and I have to take more than 2,000 based on my test. So we want you to eat good plant essential fatty acids, but again, remember, if you eat too many, like someone that only eats black walnuts, what happens is their six ratio gets too high and causes more inflammation because it's the wrong form of omegas. So we want you to have more healthy seafood. We want you to have good plant foods, but it's not enough. You'd have to have so many servings. You would be overweight and you also can't get the right balance. So we want you to eat those foods, but I want to give you that example. So we're going to find out if you're paying attention here. So remember when I talked about the back pain? So when we looked at back pain and after a year in a medical study and they even double the dose of pain medications or double and add a third medication, there was only a 6% improvement. When you have pain they, and used fish oil, 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams in the right form and the right kind of EPA and DHA, remember those are the ones that affects prostaglandins, they had less pain in 75 days. 75 days, and they found it modulated inflammation. It changed brain trauma and nervous system trauma and let things communicate the way they're supposed to. And there was another benefit they found with reduction of Alzheimer's markers and anxiety. 
So when the neurosurgeon put this to test, they actually used, instead of anti-inflammatory drugs and non-steroidal drugs, they used EPA. That EPA, remember like the one I showed you I had put my son on? 250 patients saw a neurosurgeon. 78% used 1,200 milligrams of EPA and DHA for 75 days, and 22% used 2,400 milligrams. 60% improvement in back pain in 75 days. 6% improvement, remember, with medications with side effects after one year. Again, I don't understand why this isn't the protocol first. The neurosurgeons and the, and the um, rheumatologists should be testing the omega levels, doing these kind of things first. So the data is right there. We want to tell you it's your choice. Doesn't mean you have to choose to be inactive or overly active like this gentleman here, but we want you to have quality of life. We want you to be pain free. We want you to be mobile. It does not feel good to be in pain or not to be able to move around. So part of why I bring this particular slide in is the hair tissue mineral testing shows all different things that affect nerve and muscle conduction. Nerve and muscle conduction causes pain, cramping, all sorts of things. Calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium have to be tested by hair analysis. It shows you the last three to six months inside the cell. When you have blood tests, they will not be abnormal unless you are extremely sick only on two or three different medications like blood pressure medication, and it can still take you to until you're in the hospital and almost close to death before it will show up in a blood test because your heart has to beat. So if your levels get that low, that's when they show up in blood. So we want to make sure that we're testing earlier and looking at that when there's concerns around pain or over muscle or nervous system tension. Um, and I see this clinic date is crazy. My next clinic, clinic date is May 1st. 2019, not, to, not 2029, didn't catch that yesterday. One of the things the hair tissue also shows is I love to have all my patients do it um, when they are age 50 and above because it has a toxic panel also. And it's very inexpensive. And the toxic panel shows us cadmium, aluminum, things like that. And you can see as you get older, if they start to collect in your tissues and put you at higher risk for different brain diseases and things like MS and autoimmune disease. So you get another perk from doing this test. Here's an example of, I, I did one from an injured athlete that I had that was having lots of injury and pain, and their nervous system had made their calcium too high, so they had fractured a bone in their foot, and the calcium was leaching into their tissues, and they also developed anxiety disorder. Um, had no history of anxiety at all before that, and certainly had not any uh, problems uh, with breakage. And then you could see the potassium went from normal to a one. It's actually non-existent there. The K is potassium. Potassium affects nerve and muscle conduction. That's why they were having energy problems and connective tissue problems. So very important. What was nice about this athlete is I had tested him before. So we could see what happened after a fracture that completely could not get him out of pain and anxiety until we got this better. So hair tissue analysis can be very, very helpful. We have an omega clinic and a hair tissue test uh, clinic coming up on May 1st. It's my last one until the fall or after, just so you know. So last night in my live clinic and tonight, if you get in it in the next three, four days, within a week, you can still get in there, but otherwise your results won't be back and there is no exception. So you can get in the clinic, the Omega Clinic for $189. That includes the test and I do a live webinar where I go over all the results in the clinic without names and you have those in front of you and then the hair tissue is $199. Um, May 1st, if you do them both together, then it's 350, which I've never done before, but I had a lot of requests from, from people testing a second time. So, so May 1st is my last clinic until the fall, and I don't have any dates on my calendar yet. So just keep that in mind in case you hear something tonight that you want to test. doesn't matter where you live, any state, any country, you just call. We send out the kit. It's a little finger stick test. You fill this little circle with the blood. You test a hair sample behind the hair. They both go to the lab. The results are back in two weeks on an average, as early as 10 days, the most three weeks. So that's why you got to get your sample in and get registered if you want to be in this clinic. But what things help you heal faster? So let's talk about those things. So when you increase your protein intake by 40 to 60 grams per day, 21 days post-injury or surgery, you will heal 10 times faster. 
I like a combination of whey and plant if I can choose. And I increase the juice plus to double or at least double the greens. And where I got this protocol was when I was working in the burn unit at the Cleveland Clinic. When you have burn units, uh, burn patients, you use very large amounts of protein. Their tissue heals faster. So when I was in my rotation, I said, why don't we do this for open heart surgery? Why don't we do this for our athletes? And they all looked at me and said, I don't know. So I started using the protocol with my patients. I work with a lot of Olympians with very important when they have injuries to get back on the field, that type of thing. And they do show things like visualization and relaxation also help. I'll give you some names as we go on. So the first thing, if you have a ligament tear, open heart surgery, any kind of elective surgery, and you need to heal faster, you absolutely want to increase your protein by 40 to 60 grams in a powder form. And I'm going to give you the names of ones that have research behind them for three weeks minimum. If you have something like a knee replacement or open heart surgery or a serious car accident, then we need to do it for up to three months, okay? So it's a little different depending on what level of injury or surgery you have. And here's the reason, and you're gonna find this interesting, remember why is, what kind of lecture is this? Pain and inflammation. A protein deficiency, and almost all people once they have an injury become protein deficient, will delay the three phases of healing, whether we're talking about tissue, bone, ligament, or muscle. First is the inflammation, then the fibroblastic, then the remodeling. So even when we look at rehabilitation and multiple studies, they show it's as soon as possible. I have people do it while they're in the hospital. I have spouses and so on bring in a smoothie in a cooler bag. And as soon as they wake up, they're sipping on it in a straw. They have one in the car and then they do that for three weeks minimum after their surgery or injury. The amount of protein was based on different things. In general, when you figure it out, the reason I say 40 to 60 is that when I did multiple different calculations based on studies, that was the easiest way. If you are, you know, between five foot and five foot eight, you might be able to get away with 40 grams. If you are above that or above 150 pounds, you need 60 grams. So there's all these different calculations. I just kind of show people so that it's not just I made it out of my, out of my head. Uh, there were reasons clinically and with practice as well as based on a lot of studies. So the whey protein is one of the things. We want to have milk uh, microfiltered. You want it because it has a high biological value. You also don't want to put a crap in there. You want the branched chain amino acids because it improves the immune function. Remember, immune affects inflammation. Inflammation affects healing. Hopefully already you're getting the, the, the gifs of things, why I start the lecture the way I do. Whey protein in particular, some people have an allergy to. If you do, then you can then use something that is more plant-based that I'll show you in a minute. Most people have a lot of trouble with the lactose or they have trouble with the casing. That's why this particular protein called whey protein or whey cool is one of my favorites. It's microfiltin, microfiltered. It most doesn't cause most people's stomach distress. You can put it in a shaker. When people are sick or have had surgeries, you don't feel like making fancy things. So you can actually put it in a shaker with your complete shake and just drink it. It tastes good. And it's got stevia and it's grass fed and all these other rules that I won't go over. But just in general, you don't want putting crap or bad quality into your tissues, especially anytime and especially when you're injured. I prefer you use it with a complete shake, or if you don't want to use whey or casing, then you're going to need to do two, three scoops a day of the complete shake. This has a perfect six plant blend of proteins. It has eight grams of fiber, and even in my type one diabetics, it does not elevate blood sugar. People will always say to me, I'm amazed, oh my gosh, it's so high in carbohydrates, 20 grams. Well, eight grams is fiber, and if my type one diabetics have better results than with anything that I use, and they use less insulin by a third less after a year, it does not affect blood sugar. The concentration is what affects the healing, and healing, they show, is affected by different plant proteins, the right nutrient density, and whey protein. So all of my patients, we use a combination of complete and either the whey cool, or I have one in my office called UMP. I don't put that on the lecture just because I use that more with my athletes because UMP has casing and you really need to be exercising if, um, if you're taking casing. So the ideal quality of protein when you're healing or have a lot of injuries or pain is a combination of the way cool with the complete. So you certainly can call my office to get more information. I have a lot of information on my website. So again, what's best is nutrient density, a good combination of carbs and protein that does not elevate the blood sugar because that interferes with insulin and inflammation high fiber, and you can use water, soy, rice, or almond milk. It depends what you like. I use water. All my kids use almond milk. 
okay? What they also show is that, again, the plant foods have a higher vibration for healing. And again, that's based on quantum energy, not based on an opinion. So this is my fun slide where I start to really help you think about other things because this is what I hear from people that are sick, have injury, or come into my office. I've tried everything. So I say, oh, you have, really. So everything I just taught you, you knew. And if you did, great. Okay, well, I can talk all day, believe me. So have you really? Here's nine separate things that absolutely contribute to 10 to 90% reduction in pain and inflammation based on testing, numbers, and subjectively how you feel. I'll go through this list short version, and then I will have this on my uh, website again between the next three and seven days. So you'll have the list, you'll have the cost. You certainly can take a picture of the screen. You can call my office. Caprex is one that I used when I found in the pharmacy because in Europe, this is what they use. It's a combination of hops. And you can take one as needed for pain, or you can take one up to three times a day if you have a ligament tear, severe pain, and then I'll have my patients take it for a month straight, and then we see do they need it anymore. Mariva is a particular form of curcumin that is the only one used in almost every study for pain, inflammation, and now some depression and genetic studies. It's that particular one. People bring me all sorts of stuff. I'm telling you my degree is food and nutrition science. It takes me months to bring in one product. So I have 500 different companies in my office. Some are one product from one company. It has to do with the amount, how it's processed, what the milligrams is, and does it interact with medications. Infla support is the only one on the list that I prefer you do not buy from my office unless I know more about you. And that's because it has multiple herbs. It's very inexpensive and works well. But when you use multiple herbs, it can interact with any medication under the sun. So I prefer to make sure you're my patient and I know what medications you're on or a very short version of what medication so I could decide if that would be appropriate for you or not. The SPM Active is some new technology the last few years that's a, a mediator and modulator that has been unbelievable. When I have people that have low omegas or high CRP, especially autoimmune, multiple cancers, Lyme's disease, and fibromyalgia. When I use two of those gels in combination with the Omega test, I have had at least a 50% improvement from crippling rheumatoid arthritis to less injections of Humira, less chemo and radiation, unbelievable results. So again, it's much more uh, specific, but still important to know about. Tissue helps a really good one to know about. The next ones on the list are all appropriate for someone if I know very little about you. MSM is a particular form of uh, sulfur that can help with tissue pain. And you can test by the hair analysis that I know if you need any or need a lot, but you could take two of those a day and it doesn't interact. So when I have elderly people or patients that say my mom's 80 and is there just something you could give me to maybe alleviate some of her pain without interacting with her medications, Tissue helps, very inexpensive, take two capsules a day, about 20 to 50% effect in, in some reduction in pain. Collagen building formula is the only collagen I recommend at this time. There's many brands on the market. Every brand I have analyzed have had problems. Dr. Axe, Vital Enzymes, many different ones have not, do not have the right amount of collagen. And if you don't, you can increase your risk of kidney disease. The reason I found this out is when people were using collagen in my office, especially husband and wives, I would see changes in their kidney blood work, their, their, their um, filtration rate, their um, creatinine and their BUN. And finally, I figured it out. So I have one called Collagen Building Formula. It's got a little bit of protein. It is not vegan or vegetarian. Someone asked that last night. Good question. And you could just add a scoop to your shakes. Collagen has research for the immune system, which again is part of the inflammatory process. It has uh, research for joint problems and pain, and also hair and skin tissue. So I, I put it in my top 10, like with Mariva, as far as patients that might um, find that helpful with um, aging related things that again, I don't have to know a lot about you medically. Joint nutrition and nu joint power are two different things. Joint nutrition has the chondroitin in a little higher form molecularly that they show 80% of people have less joint pain after three months on it. And so I always say, try that one if you have a lot of joint pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, that kind of thing. Take uh, three a day for three months. If you don't notice a difference, don't keep taking it. 
If you notice and you're in that 80, 79, 80% of people have a difference, wonderful, won't affect you. Joint power is just a lower dose glucosamine and chondritin, but it's very affordable. And a lot of people want something that's very, very inexpensive that they could at least try. Same thing, try it for three months. If it doesn't work, then try up, step up to the more expensive one. The joint nutrition also has bromelain in it. Bromelain is a natural enzyme that helps break down things that can affect inflammation. Um, CBD oil, all that stuff, lots of research, not questioning at all that affects pain. My concern is legality. Does it show up in a drug test? And then again, what do I know about you medically? So the Colorado hemp oil is the only one I carry in my office. It was an eight month project that we had to change twice before we even brought one in. So it's the only one I use. It's a liposomal form. It's about, I don't know, $85, $90, which is about half of most of them on the market. You put it under your tongue or in your mouth twice a day if you have pain. And then most people, again, about 50% of my patients have had a reduction in pain over anxiety. If you don't, I say don't buy it again. So those are nine different things when you tell me you've already tried everything. I guarantee you've not tried all of those. And those are just specific things. Those are even about with the nutrition that we talked about, the omega testing, the hair tissue analysis. But just again, there's so many things you don't know about that have very good science. And I've had over 18,000 patients just since I've lived in Chicago. So very good results with some of these things. <laughs> I made a joke last night. I kept this in here because I still can't figure out how it got backwards. I have done lectures my whole life. I have never had one that I can't get turned around no matter what. It just cracks me up. So I keep it in there as a laughing moment because sometimes when we talk about inflammation and pain, you know, I think we all need a joke once in a while and I don't care how good you are, it's something. Sometimes technology is just very challenging. Here's um, some other things you may not know. Let's move into a whole other realm other than pills and nutrition and, and medications and let's move into energy, quantum energy. It's one of my favorite Reiki master classes I ever had in a whole weekend years ago and I really love this picture because it's got actually orbs in it from our energy and it's, it makes it fun. When we talk about integrative non-pill forms, we have things like energy touch healing. Um, I'm a Reiki master. I do very few classes anymore, and I do do some every few years, and I'll be doing a little bit more um, when I have a second home in Florida because I think it's a nicer environment on the beach and other areas to really do energy healing. So I'll be doing more of those down the road. But if you do have interest, just let my office know, and I'll keep you on a list for when I'm ready to do my next course. Uh, we have an incredible healer here in the Illinois area, uh, Janet Southalls in Inverness. She is absolutely fantastic and an energy touch healer. Again, people don't even know these things exist based on science. If you don't believe certain things, I'm going to wow you in a minute with the biology of belief excerpt from Dr. Bruce Lipton that you have to challenge your belief system and the truth. You know, you have to smile more. You've got to be around happy people. My dad always taught me, if someone doesn't have a smile, give them yours. It's hard to not smile around people that smile. It does take away pain. They show smiling. If you've ever seen um, some of the great movies on pain, um, you know, smiling is stronger and laughter than morphine. So again, we have things that we need to do. So we tell people, you've got to be in non-toxic situations, have more friends, have more laughing and smiling. Louise Hay is a fantastic practitioner that just passed away, I think last year in her 80s and 90s. She was one of the first people that related medical illness to affirmations. She got so good at it. She, I won't even go into it, but just again, all you have to do now, you don't even have to buy the little book. You can read any of her books, they're great, but you could Google um, if you have ulcers. And it will tell you what the metaphysical cause is and an affirmation you can do. And they show a 50% turnaround by those things. So again, very important. Guided imagery, Bellworth Napperstack is incredible. Bellworth Napperstack has one of the only medical CDs that if you listen to before surgery and after surgery, they show healing time is increased by about 50% and you have less bleeding during surgery. Again, why aren't we piping this into the uh, emergency rooms and into the surgical rooms? So great to know about. So let me wow you a minute and then we'll add on just a few other facts to keep you pain free. So listen, make sure you listen up on this. Knee surgery facts. All good surgeons know there's no placebo effect in surgery, right? You have surgery or you don't. You fix the problem or you don't. This is Dr. Moose Mosley. He did a particular study that was really curious about really what part of a knee surgery actually gives people relief. Well, oops. If I can go back. Okay. So they shaved the damaged knee cartilage. They flushed out the knee joint. They removed the inflammatory material. 
Then they did fake surgery. They did exactly the same timing. They made sure it was the same sounds. They cut the knee open. They made sure the same physicians were there. They had the same post-operative care. Okay, this is where it gets good. Then the non-surgical knee surgery Come back here. patients <laughs> improved better than the surgical. Yeah. The placebo surgery out. participants did not find out for two years later. So they were not told for two years they actually did not have knee surgery. Can you believe that? This is New England Journal of Medicine. If you are a very big skeptic or very science-based, get biology of belief. It will blow you away. This is one tiny study, and the book is full of them. Dr. Norm Shealy, incredible, top pain neurosurgeon in the world. Um, he is also a medical doctor. And he had people go into his clinic crippled with arthritis, crippled. In other words, they have to come in on a gurney. They can't, you know, they're sitting like this. And he would do guided imagery, hypnotherapy, and different types of talk things. And they would walk out of the, you know, situation or the room where he was doing these kind of treatments. Credible data. What he found, there were two commonalities though with pain and please know that i'm a very loving heart-based person and it's very hard to hear these things when people have pain but they find that most people that have certain autoimmune diseases pain and cancer are extremely angry they're angry about something that happened to them they may be unconscious about it and what he found is that uh, unresolved anger caused arthritis pain and different reaction in the nervous system and he found that if you practice forgiveness through hypnotherapy, different energy medicine techniques, that, and you didn't have to go back to the person, you didn't have to confront the person, you didn't have to you know, lash out or hit things, it wasn't anything like that, but you had to, to realize to forgive what happened. Incredible results. I mean, he is someone I thought about studying with and I just loved his work. And, um, and he's from Chicago of all places. So um, I didn't even know that until I moved here. So a uh, really great man. All right, so here's our last, last group of things. Again, if you're a little more um, skeptical, then try a little more, more of traditional treatment. But here's some, right in the area, there's some of the best I've ever met in the entire United States. Functional exercise. There's certain functional exercise people like at, um, Infinite Fitness and Schaumburg that all they do is work with making sure functionality, that when you move your shoulder, it may connect to the latissimus dorsi, not a physical therapist. Physical therapists are great when you first get out of surgery and you need assistance, but it doesn't always help with functionality. Acupuncture, Carlos Carpentiera out of Bartlett is one of the best I've ever met in my entire life. It's all he does is acupuncture. Incredible man. Very, very, just you, you, even when you're just around him, he oozes good energy and love, I'll tell you. So great acupuncturist. Prolothera uh, prolotherapy and stem cell. You hear a lot of this on commercials and a lot of bad things. It's unfortunate because a lot of people are just jumping into it and they're doing injections. But Dr. Mitchell Scheinkopf was an orthopedic surgeon that quit doing surgery to do stem cell and prolotherapy. If you're going to do some kind of internal therapy and try to avoid surgery when you've got shoulder injuries, knee issues, and stuff like that, and you want to stay very active, then you want to see Dr. Mitchell Scheinkopf. Uh, massage. Jody Kendall's in Hoffman Estates, one of the best I've ever met in the entire, entire world. I've had massages all over the world. Still one of the very best. She's right here in Hoffman Estates. Chiropractor. I know Illinois has a lot of chiropractors. I can only tell you I've know, I know dozens of good chiropractors, but Dr. Frederick Schuster is probably one of the best I've ever met. He can do just about everything. He is incredibly intuitive, and he understands the body's connected. You can go in, and your, your Achilles hurts, and he'll tell you it's because of your left hip joint. You're like, no, it's not. Then he'll press on it, and you come off the table. Credible, credible chiropractor. Okay? So here, again, are on-hand therapies that are more traditional, but we've got great people in this area, and it's taken me so many years to find people, for people. I do believe most of us need a team when there's pain, and you've got to do foundational things, like the Juice Plus, like the Complete Shake, like more anti-inflammatory foods. You've got to take responsibility. You've got to do some testing, especially the omega test and the C-reactive protein. So please remember, you want to clean up your diet, you want to skip prescription drugs when possible. And if you do have to take them as short as possible, you've got to be your own advocate. And I know you guys are. You're on this lecture on a Wednesday night. We had a full house last night. 
and I'm going to be making sure, hopefully, it recorded. I always hold my fingers because it's never real clear. Um, but, uh, you know, very exciting. You want to take the right supplements and nutrition. I didn't even mention the family and children's health study. If an adult in the home starts on Juice Plus, we can get a child in a study for free for up to four years. There's been over a million adults and children studied. It is one of the biggest nutritional intervention studies ever done worldwide. And you can take Juice Plus and Vineyard Blend and have a child on it for free. You want to choose more non-processed food, and you want to individualize and assess your omega-3s, your tissue minerals. Our last webinar of this season is May 1st. You can call my office, 847-985-1200, or you can email ncbteam at nutritionconnectionbalance.com, or you can go to my website, nutritionconnectionbalance.com, all the information's there. And then you want to experience more vibrational body alignment, happiness, smiles, so I hope you guys learned a lot. Let me turn off the recording and let me see what time it is. Woo, all right, when it's not live, I got it to an hour. Tough one. All right, let me just put it on hold and stop the recording. All right.